In this video, we will introduce you to the Virtualizer Studio VDK debug interface. We will use the Synopsys ARM V8-based VDK, which is a model of ARM's V8 reference platform, to highlight the features it offers to accelerate your software development flow. Let's take a look at the structure of the VDK. Using the Design Browser window, we can see the models that the VDK contains, organized in a hierarchical fashion. As you can see, the VDK has two main high-level blocks, the CPU subsystem and the motherboard. Opening the CPU subsystem reveals the various components that it contains, such as CPUs, interrupt controller, and coherent interconnect. If I open the motherboard block, we can see the models it contains, such as UARTs, timers, memory components, and interface components like Ethernet and MMC. This window also allows you to examine the system's signals and registers. Click on any component in the left pane to see its details displayed on the right. Next, we'll take a look at the Memory Map tab. This provides a complete view of the VDK's memory map in one place, meaning that you don't need to keep referring back to the system specifications while debugging. All the information you need is here. The memory map view, like the design browser, allows you to easily access components registers. For example, we can select UART0 here and view the details of its registers in the context of the system memory map. Virtualizer Studio allows you to create multiple configurations, or VP configs, which are used to set up your VDK to run different software stacks. In this VDK, we already have two prepackaged configurations. We can see these in the VP config list box. There's a stock Linaro image for the V8 reference platform and platform test base, which is a bare metal ARM software image. I'll select the Linaro image and click the Run button to start the simulation. After some initialization steps, the simulation pauses and control passes to the VDK debugger. You can start to debug your embedded software from this point. Let's take a look at what you can do. The VP disassembly window shows the status of code execution for each core in the system when the simulation is paused. Currently, it's showing the point at which code execution will begin. Virtualizer Studio provides you with various means to set up your debug session by focusing on an area of the code which you want to examine more closely. Setting breakpoints on software execution conditions are a great way to do this, but Virtualizer Studio also allows you to do this for hardware conditions. Let's see how this works. First, we'll set a breakpoint on a software condition, the beginning of the start kernel routine. I can search for the routine and simply double click at the point at which I want to place my breakpoint. Next, we'll set a hardware breakpoint to allow us to look at the software hardware interactions during keyboard handling. First, I'll locate the device which handles keyboard input in the design browser. Now, I can set a breakpoint on any access to its control register, KMICR. You can see the newly created breakpoint in the breakpoints window, which is a handy summary of all your breakpoints. Now we can click the resume button to start the simulation running again. Notice the messages on the UART Phi window indicating execution of the trusted firmware boot sequence. Soon, execution stops at the start kernel breakpoint. Now we are able to single step the code in the disassembly window to see the execution path through the routine. We can resume the Linux boot and check out the progress on the UART Phi window. The currently executing process and the simulation time are indicated at the bottom of the disassembly window. Simulation progresses until our hardware breakpoint is hit. We can now examine the control register in the design browser and see the value of each bit field. We can also see the CPU routine which is accessing the register. You can also edit the register value from here. 
Now we can remove all our breakpoints using a single click from the breakpoint view and let the Linux image boot fully. A virtual LCD panel appears with a Linux prompt. You can interact with the Linux kernel using standard Linux commands. Here we see the CPU subsystem details printed to the screen corresponding to the information we saw earlier in the design browser. This brings us to the end of this video.